All right, everybody, welcome back. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna get started on MP2. So before you do this, uh, you know, make sure that MP1 is done. Uh, you know, MP2 builds on top of MP1. Um, and so before you start with MP2, make sure you're finished with MP1, your work is committed and pushed and you've earned full points. I'm running the uh, MP1 test suite right now while we talk, just to make sure that I'm in a good place to go forward with MP2. Um, the real reason to do this is that just like MP1, once we bring in the test suites that we need for MP2, everything's gonna stop working for a few minutes until we get some of the starter code stubbed out, which is what we're gonna to do together in this video. Um, so, you know, you wanna make sure before, you know, you, you take that plunge that everything is, is good to go and set up the way you think it's supposed to be. No idea why these tests are taking so long to, to, to run, um, but I guess I'm just gonna to have to keep talking for another minute. Um, so what we're gonna do is, just for a preview, we're going to get the MP2 tests, we're gonna get them in position, uh, we're gonna get some new data that we need to work on this particular uh, checkpoint, uh, and then we're gonna go through and just make the minimal set of changes required so that the code will compile and run. We'll be failing all the test cases, which is what we expect as we're starting MP2. Uh, once we're done with that, we'll commit our work, and then we'll come back in a separate video and we'll talk a little bit about how to get started with the first part of MP2, but this will also give us a little bit of an overview of what we're about to do on this next checkpoint. All right, so uh, my MP1 tests are passing. Uh, if I try to commit, you're gonna see that it's an empty, there, there's nothing to commit right now, uh, which is great. So I'm gonna close that. So now I'm gonna go over to my project view and I need to get a couple of things open. So the first thing that I'm gonna have, uh, first thing I'm gonna add to my project is a new piece of data. So up until now, you've been working with a list of restaurants. Now we actually have a list of restaurant preferences that we uh, got from course staff members. And we're gonna bring that into our project as well, um, which is something that we're gonna use to provide restaurant recommendations as part of this checkpoint. And then something that we use in the next checkpoint as well. So I'm gonna go and, and to my downloads and I'm gonna grab uh, preferences.csv. I'm gonna put it in my source main resources directory and I want it right next to restaurants.csv. Uh, so if you'll see if I did this properly, now it's going to ask me if I want to add it. I'm going to say yes, uh, because I want to add this file to Git. So you'll see it's green now. This is uh, new data. Now the format of this is something that we'll have to talk about later. But for now, this is what it should uh, what it should look like. Okay, great. The other thing I need is I actually need the test suites themselves. So I'm going to go over here to uh, source test colon. You'll see I have MP1 test, MP0 test here. This is the exact same place where I want to put my MP2 test suite. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to grab mp2test.kt, drag it into position, um, and I want to say, um, I want to edit this file anyway. I think that's okay. Hit refactor, uh, and there it is. Okay, and now hit add again, because I want to commit this file. Cool. So now once uh, Android Studio has a minute to figure out what's going on. You're going to see that this is underlined in red, and there's quite a few different problems that we need to solve before we can continue um, as we go through this. And so I'm just gonna kind of go in order, and this will sort of go in order of, of the type of changes that you're gonna need to make in order to complete this checkpoint. So let me close the, the testing window. We're not gonna need that right now. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go into uh, source Kotlin network uh, server, and I need to add a method, I need to add a method called load preferences. And this is gonna be one of the first things that we're gonna do. So this is gonna be MP2 part one, uh, sorry, part one load preferences from, uh, from CSV and convert to JSON. So one of the things you're gonna be doing in this checkpoint is you're going to be um, mimicking a lot of code that we've already given you, right? So I'll just have this return a blank string for now. Um, and why is it up? Oh, that's fine. Okay, uh, detect can just uh, not, we can just ignore that for now. Um, and so you'll see now load preferences is defined, okay. Uh, one of the things we're gonna be doing as part of MP2 is we're gonna be, be showing you how to mimic code that's already in your project. So uh, rather, there is a little bit more code to write for MP2. It's not a huge amount, but the code that we're asking you to write is very similar to the code that we've provided. And so what we're gonna be doing together more this time is reading some of the code together, understanding what it does, and then asking you to sort of build on top of it. Okay, cool, so, so that works. Uh, now let's go back to MP2 Destin and look at the next problem, 
which is, ah, uh, yes, I need a preference model. So what's in preferences.csv is information about restaurant preferences of the course staff. And I need a model in order to re represent that information. So I'm going to go over to models.kt. I will close my restaurant model, and I'll close my search. Um, and down here, I'm going to add uh, just a new uh, preference class. And right now, this can just be empty. Uh, that's OK. If I go back to this, you'll see that now uh, those errors go away. Um, so I'm going to need to add more to that later, but for now, that's OK. Um, I'm just doing the minimum number of changes I need in order to, uh, and I'll just put a note here as well, empty to part uh, uh, add information to my, uh, and actually, we'll do this in part one. We'll say add information to my preference model. All right, cool. All right, so now I'm back here, uh, and I'm going to keep going. Um, and the, the next thing I notice is that it looks like my restaurant model needs an ID. Um, and that's actually true. So I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to add an ID field. Some of you may already have this, because you may have added this as part of an, uh, an earlier uh, checkpoint. Uh, and now I need to modify the constructor a little bit, and now I'm good. So I've added an ID uh, field to uh, my restaurant model. Uh, you'll see that those errors now go away. And I really have at this point, yes, two things left to work on. So as part of, sorry, three. Um, so we're actually going to, as part of this checkpoint, add a new uh, piece of client server communication. We'll talk about all this in detail. Don't worry. This is just sort of the high level overview. And so I'm going to go over to get client. And you see here that there's a method called get restaurants. I need to mimic that method uh, with a new method called get preferences. And I'm going to, so I'm going to cut and paste that down here. I'm going to call this get preferences. I'm going to close that. And this callback now should, be, should return a list of preferences. Uh, and I can import that from my models class. Um, we'll talk about exactly how to get this callback to work and what it's doing and why we're using the callback here at all um, when we talk about that part of the MP. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to call callback null. So I'm just going to return a, a null list. Um, and so that's OK. Uh, that's going to work. So that's going to get uh, rid of one more error in my MP2 test. And now I'm down to the last few things. So as part of this checkpoint, we're going to add a new screen to the app, which is pretty cool. Um, in order to do that, I need to create a new activity. So I'm going to go up here to activities. And I'm going to hit new Java class. I'm going to call this restaurant activity. Be careful with how you name things. At least for me, restaurant is a hard word to spell. Uh, so if you, if you fat finger it and put something in there that, that doesn't match, it's not going to work. Uh, I want to add this file uh, because I, I need this uh, committed. And if I go over to my main activity and look at uh, the way that it's structured, I need to extend an, act, uh, uh, an activity called app compat activity. This is uh, required for this to work with Android. Uh, so I'm going to extend app compat activity. Uh, why is it upset with me here? Uh, oh, sorry. I created it. <laughs> sorry. Whoops. Let's. Uh, I am in Java mode. Sometimes you. Sometimes you just get in Java mode. Uh, okay. So let's try this again. Uh, Kotlin class file. There we go. Restaurant activity. So I get more practice with uh, typing restaurant. Um, hit class. Hit add again. Uh, and now I'm going to. Uh, import my uh, app compat activity that works fine and, I, and this just this is the, something else that can just be empty I think it wants a space here and yes it does okay so I go back to mp2 test you'll see that that error is gone and there's one last thing I need um, so as part of this checkpoint we're going to be reading and processing information about uh, the re restaurant preferences of staff so I've given you information about which restaurants staff like and what we're going to do is we're going to process that to identify relationships between restaurants. So the presumption here is that if somebody likes two or three restaurants, then those restaurants might be related. And so if I'm browsing a particular restaurant, I can use that to generate recommendations about other restaurants that you might like if you like this restaurant. Because other people who like that restaurant also like these other restaurants, right? So I need to add a new model to store this information. And this one's a little bit more complicated than the one that we just added. So let's go back to models. Um, and this is going to be the last part of uh, MP2 uh, related uh, restaurants. Uh, is that what it's called? Related restaurants, yeah. So my related restaurants model. 
So my related restaurants model is going to, uh, it's going to receive, it needs to provide a primary constructor that receives two things, um, a list of restaurants, uh, restaurant, and then a list of preferences. Okay, so that's, that's good, that's there. So the re related restaurants class takes a list of restaurants and a list of preferences. Uh, and you'll notice that I need to do this so that I can create one uh, down, well, somewhere in here. Um, and then it also provides a single method called get related. And get related returns a map from string to integer. And we're gonna talk about how to do this. Uh, but for right now, we just need to add this method so that we can, so this is called get related. It takes a string as a parameter. I'm gonna call this from string and it returns a map from string to int. And for now, I can just return an empty map. I'll just return map of, uh, and that will just give me an empty map. Okay, so now mp2test.kt is, is uh, is uh, there's no comp compilation errors here, here. Look, there's no compilation errors here. There's no compilation errors left in this file. Awesome. So let's actually run this test suite. Now we don't have a run configuration yet for test MP2. It's very easy to create one. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to select test MP1, and then I'm going to hit copy. Uh, and I'm going to get something called test MP11. I'm going to change that to test MP2, and I'm going to have it run the MP2 test suite. Cool. Um, and you can add this to your, uh, you can click here in the stores project file, that's fine. If you want to add it to, uh, that'll, that'll uh, include it in your commit so that it's now part of the repository. If you start the project again on another machine, you'll get this run configuration. So that's usually something uh, useful if it's something you're going to use a lot. Okay, so let's try running this. I don't expect any of these tests to pass yet. We actually haven't given you any tests in this suite that actually pass out of the box. Um, what I expect to happen is them all to fail, but I just want to make sure that my project is able to build properly before I start working on it. Um, so as I'm waiting for this, let me just uh, uh, point out something. So it can be tempting sometimes to get rid of these types of errors by commenting out parts of the test suite. But here's the problem. When you submit your code for official grading, we are going to copy our test suites over yours because we don't trust your test suites. I mean, you could just replace them all with doing nothing and then you'd get full points on the MP and that's not fair. So, so we use our test suites. So if you comment out stuff from the test suite and if that's useful for your local testing, that's okay. But just keep in mind that when we test officially, we, co we copy in our official test suites. There's no difference between the official test suites and what we give you. We're not hiding anything. We just do that to make sure that we're actually running the real tests rather than whatever changes you made. If you comment out stuff that causes, so if you comment out part of the test suite, but then your code doesn't compile when we use our tests, then you're gonna get a big fat zero. It doesn't even matter if part of your code is working. Your app has to compile in order for us to test it. So this is really the right approach here, right? In terms of how to make these initial changes. Um, so let's go ahead. So now actually let's, so this is done. I'm gonna go over to my grade file before I forget, grade.yaml, and I'm gonna change that to checkpoint two. Awesome, okay. And now let's do a commit, and this will give us a chance to review what we did. Uh, so I've got things to the point where I have the MP2 test suites added, the preferences.csv, but what other changes did I make to, to get here, just so that you can review and make sure that, that you're at the same place. Okay. So I added mp2test.kt preferences.csv. I also added, let's see, can I make this bigger somehow? I'm sure I can. I'm sure I can. Okay, and then we'll, I don't need this open right now. Uh, okay, cool. Um, and so let's see, is there a way to show me, uh, show diff, here we go. Uh, Right, so you'll see that I added this new restaurant activity.kt and all it's just an empty class for now. We'll work on this later. Um, I made some changes to client.kt. What did I do here? Here, you'll see that I imported the preferences model and then I also added this get preferences method that returns a callback that accepts a callback that itself accepts a list of preferences, a nullable list, and I just called that callback with null. Um, so that's what I added to client.kt. Um, what about 
models.kt. I had to make a few changes here. So let's look again, we can show diff. Um, you'll see that I had to add an ID field to my, to my restaurant uh, model. And then I also added the preferences model uh, as well and my related, uh, my related restaurant model. Those were in there. Um, what changes did I make to server.kt? I'll look at the diff. Um, looks like I added the load preferences method that just returns a string. Okay, uh, cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this commit. Uh, oh, wait, uh, cancel. Uh, okay, let's, let's try this again. I'm going to say um, added mp2 test suites. Now, hopefully I didn't break something. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, there's going to be a few warnings here that, that, that may, maybe there are. Uh, let's just say commit. We don't need to see those. Um, okay, cool. So this is how to get started with uh, mp2. So you want to get to the point where things are compiling. You're not expecting to get any points. I'm actually not expecting to get any points because there's a there's an error with detect, right? Because there's that method that's returning a a constant that detect says I should I should care about. Um, so if I run the grader, I'm expecting at this point to get a big fat zero, uh, zero points on MP2, but that's okay. Everything should compile. The test suites are running. Um, that's a good starting point. And over the lessons that we have devoted to this checkpoint to MP2, we'll go through everything you need to know in order to complete each part of the assignment the same way that we did for MP1 uh, and, and for MP0 as well, and the same way we will for MP3. Um, all right, so this is running, give it a minute. Test suites are, the test cases are gonna fail. Um, and then I'm going to, I'll examine my score, make sure that the score is zero, which is what I expect it is. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could push for official grading, but I don't have any points. And so there's no real point to do that yet. Okay, cool. All right, so we're off to a great start with MP2. Uh, what we'll do next is now that we have the MP2 test suites and the data that we need, everything's committed, we have a good starting point for MP2, we'll talk about how to approach the first test case and the first task that you need to complete.